They didn't let you speak? Hardly. No, they did not let me speak. Not let me speak. That's Brooklyn mother Sandy Chady. In a few minutes, you're going to watch her walk out of a courtroom in Staten Island, Family Court Division. She's going to be upset, and in my estimation, rightfully so, because she's a fit mother, according to the court-ordered uh, forensic psychologist, uh, Dr. Kaplan, but yet, for some reason, uh, she is now faced with uh, custodial, uh, supervised uh, custodial visits for her son, and uh, there's no basis, in fact, or law behind it. Keep watching. <laughs> Down in Brooklyn, I wish Sandy Chady all the luck in the world in her pending federal appeal against Judge Deborah Silver, as well as law guardian Rita Kaufman. Uh, these two women have conspired uh, in a manner that I deem to be criminal, to keep a child in a dangerous environment. You can get immunity from the courts. They do, and they can turn their backs and hide, but I'm still going to be there. Sir, were you arrested on September 1st? incest between Carlos Pena and his mother, Maria Pena. What did he say? He said in specific, my son actually was a little over... Let me try to explain this to you. That's Rita Kaufman. She's the law guardian for a child who was taken from its mother for no reason, basically. All right? And what this law guardian is doing right now is she is not showing that she has the child's best interest at heart. She is showing that she has the judge's best interest at heart because she's working with this judge to cover up wrong. I've read the file extensively, and when I say that Rita Kaufman is behaving like the devil incarnate, I really mean it. Let's go back to 2006. Uh, around that era, uh, Carlos Pena was exposing his son publicly and photographing him, trying to prove points against the mother. He was reprimanded for that, and uh, supervised visitation was recommended at the time you know, by her, okay? But let's flash forward. More things have happened in the household. Sandy Chady has voiced concerns about possible incest and violence in the home, that her son is telling her about. And yet, and still, this woman is ignoring all of it, okay? There's a pending petition for a year that's been ignored. And uh, meanwhile, back at the trial, when the trial happened, uh, the guardian ad litem, Rita Kaufman, uh, ignored the fact that Miss Chady was conciliatory when it came to visitation schedules. And instead, the two of them, between Kaufman and Judge Silber, issued this, this bogus order well, unfortunately, it's not a bogus order. The order does exist, but it's quasi-criminal in nature as far as I'm concerned because all it does is uh, contain conjecture that Miss Chady will violate the terms of visitation when, in point of fact, she didn't. So come to find out now two years down the road, uh, Mr. Pena had filed some other uh, ridiculous uh, request for contempt uh, that was thrown out the other day. It was uh, regarding insurance where... Miss Chady had complained that she was not keeping him on insurance, but in any event, they had thrown that one out. But it's not exactly as if the courts uh, granted any grand favors here in this dog and pony show, because uh, this pig, Rita Kaufman, is failing to exercise due diligence in favor of this child. Because if she had been, they would have examined Miss Chady's pending complaints. Uh, but they didn't. They left her petition alone, and they addressed Carlos Pena's petition, even though it's clearly frivolous. So yeah, they let it go. But even in doing that, the courts, with the assistance of uh, Ms. Kaufman, are ignoring her concerns, which include the incest, the possible violence in the house, and the guns in the house. All they have against Ms. Chady is the fact that she's not yet married to this man and that she allegedly assaulted Mr. Pena or harassed him on September 7th of this year when I was present recording, asking him about his arrest the week prior. It's ridiculous. Not only that, don't forget the fact that he was the one who was ordered to pay child support. Oh, but wait, there's more. There's an allegation now that Carlos Pena has not kept the child on uh, medical insurance as he's supposed to. So that's yet another issue uh, for Mr. Maturity. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. These women have basically made Sandy Chady into a surrogate mother. Now they're offering her potentially, uh, what do they say, supervised visits. Why? What has she done wrong to merit this type of punishment that she would only get supervised visits with her child? Nothing. Then they, they threaten to, oh, keep it that way unless she takes down information on the Internet. So wait a minute. Now they're going to try to pimp out her First Amendment rights to discuss this situation by giving her what she's owed already? It doesn't make any sense. She's not going to stop talking about it. I'm not going to stop talking about it. We're going to see where it goes. That's how it works. Last month, Carlos Pena filed a bogus claim of harassment by Sandy Chady and me. And how do I know that it's bogus? Because we're standing at the police station when it happened, or when it allegedly happened. 
and he said nothing. Really, officer? Whoa, she got a flea on foot, wearing knees? Come on. Why is there so much focus on her and not on him? It doesn't make any sense. This is the guy who didn't pay his bills. This is the guy who was arrested last week. But everything she does is magnified. Everything he does is like he's Teflon Don. Why is that? He was late for, for coming for this the is, You see this? This is for you to show yeah, I have no problem with, okay. with accepting service. I okay. served him with papers last right, week, fine. and he assaulted a few police officers, and he was right. arrested here. Wh whatever just happened, on then, September the 1st. happened then? I just want to find out if you were arrested last week, sir, and if you'd be facing trial or charges for that. Facing trial on charges or anything, sir? Were you, were you arrested last week? You sir. don't have liquor on your breath. I just walked in there and you had oh, liquor on your breath. I have breath. candy in my mouth. You're no, you don't mind. have candy. You got were you ordered to, were you ordered to pay child support, Mr. Yeah. Pena? Oh, of course he was arrested. But Rita Kaufman doesn't care because she's the devil incarnate in this situation. Much of this is her fault. Now let's take a look. There's more. Uh, Carlos Pena is always asking for money. And here he is now trying to get custodial payments, you know, child support payments from Sandy Chady. He's in her pocket. And it doesn't make any sense. Why is this being rewarded? She hasn't violated any court order. Why is she having to pay money now? Okay? They're treating her like chattel. That's the whole thing. And there's more. We're still investigating exactly what this woman's role is, but Carlos Pena's mother sent her along for the ride this week after he was allegedly arrested last week at the 72nd Precinct. <laughs> So his mother asked him to take a ride with him? Yeah, yeah, his mother said that he couldn't come here alone. I don't know. Oh, yeah, that's a right. very disturbing incident to me by detail, specific detail, which would amount to incest between Carlos Pena and his mother, Maria Pena. What did he say? He said in specific, my son actually was a little over four and a half years at the time, and he started fondling my breasts. Uh, one morning, and then when I asked him basically what he was doing, his first words to me was, Daddy does this to Grandma. Coach Pena, did you actually file a complaint against me for harassment? Sir, were you arrested on September 1st? Yeah. I'm Marie. I'm Chris King. You nice want to shake you. my hand? Sure. Okay. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Listen, I know that you're a reporter. Yes. But I think that you ought to look at both sides first. I am. I just want to know: Was your son arrested on September 1st, ma'am? He's a very sweet man, and you should get to know him. Well, he didn't speak to me. I tried. Listen, he always picks nice guys. Uh huh. Well, you know, uh, I heard he was intrinsically violent. That's all I can go with. Because you heard it from a one-sided person. I see. But what about the arrest on September 1st? Was he being a nice guy that day? Didn't your mother ever teach you that there are at least two sides to every story? You should listen to your mother. I, I, I do listen to my mother, and that's why I'm trying to find out both sides, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It's hard to find out both sides if he won't answer a question, is it? Hey, are you Rita Kaufman? Ma'am? Are you Rita Kaufman? Oh, that's definitely Rita Kaufman, and she definitely doesn't want to talk to me about any of this. Now, uh, what's interesting is that Ms. Kaufman was the named defendant in the lawsuit against uh, Judge Deborah Silver, but she was dismissed, but the court never even addressed anything about Ms. Kaufman. It was just like court basically saying to Ms. Chady, just get the hell out of here. We don't want to deal with you. And that's how these courts are these days. Unless, of course, you're working for the benefit and in the best interest of the father exclusively, which is exactly what Rita Kaufman is doing. And it's pathetic. Now, I'll get a load of this latest visitation restriction, okay? Here we have it. Uh, Sandy Chady's walking there with her allegedly unknown paramour. All right? It's no business of Ms. Mr. Pena's you know, who that paramour is. If the court's not satisfied, then the court can raise it. But the court didn't raise it, yet it is restricting, you know, visitation allegedly based on this issue. It's insane. As far as not knowing him, if you don't know him, as Mr. Pena's mother told me, perhaps you should get to know him. Why is she open to so much scrutiny? <laughs> They didn't let you speak? Hardly. No, they did not let me speak. They they listening to the father's petition, one petition that he filed on something ridiculous that I applied for medical coverage for my child. That's a violation of the order? 
that I apply for medical coverage when he is the one that has sole custody now and he's in the absence of not having medical insurance for my son and he's considered to be the fit father that I lost my son over? Let's return briefly to Attorney Kaufman. She's supposed to have the best interest of the child at heart, but really she has the best interest of the system at heart and covering up for his deficiencies and corruption. She's happy with the notion that if I were to stop posting about this case on my journals and if Miss Chady was to stop talking about this case publicly, then she could have her full visitation back. But the point is, we're not doing that because the visitation was inappropriately taken in the first place pursuant to that. I understand that uh, Mr. Pena has filed a complaint against you and me, I guess, as as far as my coverage of this, yes. as far as your activity. What, what is it, what's this all about? Um, on September 11th, um, Carlos Pena filed a family offense petition, um, and it states that the most recent incident on September 7th of 2012 at the 72nd Precinct. Mm -hmm. He states that the petitioner um, states that the respondent verbally attacked, threatened, and harassed him and his neighbor with the assistance of Christopher King, who was filming the petitioner. This uh, occurred at the precinct while the petitioner was picking up the child. Interesting. Now, there were police all around us at that time, weren't there? Yes, there were. And do you, did you at any point in time see Mr. Pena ask the police for assistance? No, he absolutely did not. Not even once, the. And in short, there were many details, but it was just too logical and coherent what a four-and-a-half-year-old would state to his mother that he saw Daddy fondling his mommy's breast. And then I said, well, did anyone see you? And he said, yes, Grandma saw me. And what did you do when Grandma saw you? Grandma punched Daddy in the face. And then I said, and what happened? Daddy punched Grandma here. He described, he showed in the chest. And I asked him, wasn't he afraid? He said, no, Mommy, I was a brave boy. I was a brave boy. And I asked him what happened. He said, Grandma told me to get out, get out right now, because I guess it was, um, according to what he stated later on, it was in the grandmother's house upstate. Gotcha. And there's, there's, there's more details, basically, uh, that my son revealed that he was very angry he was very angry and that he actually felt like hurting someone and he pulled my hair and I said, who did you want to do that to? He said, I felt like doing that to grandma. Do you have any idea where the judge would uh, circumscribe your, uh, your First Amendment right to discuss religion with your son? According to her 58-page decision, what she stated directly in there, she quoted several times uh, Jehovah's Witnesses as an organization are... Um, against uh, the gay lesbian community and her being uh, a gay lesbian activist and a former board member of Lambda, I'm assuming that this is offensive to her um, and she's allowed her personal feelings and her personal opinions um, to sway her decision that she made in taking my son away. So then Ms. Kaufman, we are not going to about our First Amendment rights to get the visitation rights that Miss Cheney should have had in the first place. She should have had custody. Anyway, here's what's going on. Uh, I'm going to watch this thing develop and watch him try to prove any sort of harassment because the Keeper of Grounds yesterday specifically held that what I was doing was not illegal or harassing. So there you go. Shame on you, Rita Kaufman. Shame on you.